The History of Philippine, American War in 1899 to 1902. Contrary to popular belief, the occupation and control of the Philippines took more time and violence than expected. Despite a lack of arms and ammunition, the Filipinos fought valiantly throughout the country. They were humiliated in the face of a fully equipped and trained army for conventional warfare, however, the Filipinos successfully maintained the resistance through guerrilla warfare. To end the war, the United States used repressive and violent measures such as water cure, reconcentration, and scorched earth tactics. Before signing the Treaty of Paris, President McKinley stated that he did not know what to do with the Philippines. The proclamation was signed by President McKinley. McKinley formally announced American policy toward the Philippines for the first time. It clearly stated the United States' intention to exercise sovereignty over the entire Philippines, effectively making it a U.S. colony. General Emilio Aguinaldo was well aware that war with the United States would cause hardship and suffering among the people. He attempted to de-escalate the situation by suggesting to General Otis that their representatives meet to discuss ways and means of avoiding a conflict. General Otis appointed his representatives which were composed of three military officers. Aguinaldo also appointed his three representatives. The six representatives met for almost one month in January, but nothing came out of the meetings because the American representatives were stalling, which heightened the tension between the two panels. On February 1, 1899 a group of American engineers was arrested by Filipino troops. On February 2, General MacArthur protested the presence of the some Filipino soldiers within in the American lines, the Filipino withdrew and MacArthur was satisfied. Private Willie G. Grayson shot a Filipino soldier on the night of February 4, 1899, at the intersection of Sosiego and Silencio streets in Santa Mesa, Manila. The Filipino responded with a rifle, and the Philippine-American War began. With La Loma in his hands, MacArthur proceeded to Caloocan, where he was met by General Antonio Luna's force. In the ensuing battle, Luna was defeated. The superior American arms could not be neutralized solely by bravery and courage. Luna then planned to retake Manila on March 22 and led the attack. In February and March, American reinforcements arrived and General Otis launched an offensive in the north, while General Henry Lawton launched an offensive in the south, Pulo fell to the Americans, and by March 30th, they were knocking on the door of the Malolos. In the Battle of Pulo on March 25th, Filipino troops defeated General Lloyd Wheaton and killed an American colonel. When the Americans tried to win over the Filipinos by promising them freedom and autonomy, Maybini said this was a trick of the enemy, he was for the independence of the Philippines, he wouldn't accept anything less than independence, however, his enemies, like Pedro Paterno, Ambrosio Rianzes Bautista, Felipe Buencamino, and many others who belonged to wealthy and powerful, opposed him. They believed that autonomy would be good for the Filipinos, so they accepted the American offer of autonomy. Since the group knew that Maybini was opposed to their views, they removed Maybini from office. On May 7, Aguinaldo informed Maybini that Paterno was forming a new cabinet. Maybini knew what it meant. The conquest of the Visayas, meanwhile, General Otis instructed Miller to invade Iloilo, to Miller's demand that the Filipino troops surrender, the Visayan patriots under the leadership of General Martin Delgado decided to fight instead, to prevent the enemy from capturing the city, Delgado ordered his men to burn it, the Cebu patriots, however, did not give up the fight easily. A committee of prominent Negrenses was dispatched to Manila to request that General Otis allow them to arm a battalion to maintain peace and order. The petition was approved by General Otis because it was an unusual act of collaboration with the Americans. On March 1, General Otis issued an order establishing a military district that included Pani, Negros, and Cebu. On August 20, 1899 an agreement was signed by General Bates, representing the United States and the Sultan of Joloa and Datis, representing the Sulu Sultanate. 
people rallied behind Aguinaldo, donating money, food, and other resources to the Revolutionary Army. Later, he abandoned his family in order to spare them the pains of travel. Aguinaldo walked to Tierra Virgen, Cagayan, with a small group of devoted followers. He and his soldiers arrived in Palanan, Isabella, on September 6, 1990, where he established their headquarters. After the departure of Aguinaldo, Del Pilar chose to delay the enemy at Pasong Tirad, a narrow pass of 4,500 feet high where he had a good view of the surrounding country. In the morning of December 2, 1899, Major Payton March and his well armed men proceeded toward Del Pilar's position. The Filipino troops guarding the narrow pass fired at the Americans, who had no recourse but to retreat. Aguinaldo was brought to Manila on April 1, 1901. He took the oath of allegiance to the government of the United States. In a proclamation of April 19, he appealed to the Filipino people to accept the sovereignty of the United States. General Emilio Aguinaldo boarding the USS Vicksburg as a prisoner of war. On February 27, 1902, they capture General Vicente Lucban in Sama. This is the end guerrilla war face in that province. Two months later, on April 16, 1902, General Malva surrendered in order to save his people from the brutality of the enemy and from hunger. Despite the official declaration of the end of war by President Theodore Roosevelt was on July 4, 1902. Thank you for watching.